Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to the festive Vaughn Manor, where Roger and I have returned for my weekend reading report. It's my weekend reading report. Christmas edition, special Christmas edition. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to all who celebrate holidays, whatever holidays you might celebrate. Roger and I, we celebrate every holiday we can get away with celebrating. So we're going to have a good couple of days, I think. You know, yeah, we're going to have fun. And I did read some stuff this week. Not a lot of stuff, but some stuff. You know, my life is as, has been as busy as usual. And as usual, I didn't read as much as I would have liked. But I did read book number 88 in the 500 Book Challenge. The 500 Book Challenge, the challenge where I'm reading 500 books that I already own before I will buy any new ones. The challenge that just goes on and on and on. And, you know, we'll be talking about this, you know, next Christmas as well, and the Christmas after that, and the Christmas after that. Probably because I am not a particularly fast reader. But this week I did read the 88th book in that challenge, and that is this one. This is John Wyndham's The Midwitch Cuckoos. The Midwitch Cuckoos. I actually decided to read this now because of The Winter of Wyndham, which is a reading event created by Gareth over at Books, Books, Songs, and Other Magic. Great, great channel. And every month we are reading a book by John Wyndham, every month during winter. And so the December book, I decided, would be this one, The Midwitch Cuckoos. And John Wyndham is the guy who wrote The Day of the Triffids, the fantastic Day of the Triffids, one of my favorite books of all time, about, you know, the end of the world and giant plants. This book, it's probably, Day of the Triffids was probably a better book. But this comes close, just on the strength, on the strength of its ideas alone and the execution of the idea. It's, it's the weirdest alien invasion book I think I've read. It is not a straightforward alien invasion book, but it's done in a peculiar way where aliens are infiltrating our society. And in this case, one day in the small village of Midwich, all the women were, became mysteriously pregnant and gave birth to alien children. Children that look just like regular children, but they're little weird with these creepy golden eyes and they all have like blonde hair and they're just they're just creepy kids you know and they've got like psychic powers and things so they're they're frankly really dangerous dangerous kids you know even more dangerous than usual you know really well written really interesting it's told in the first person although the character that tells the story he has a certain distance from the story. And there's another character who's actually the main character of the story. And I was wondering through the entire book, well, why isn't that character, why isn't this told from his point of view? And, or it could have been told in third person, you know, and it probably would have been just as effective, if not more so. But then you get to the last two pages, which explains why, you know, it, it, it makes clear why it's written the way it is. And it's, this has a really good ending, not just because of what happened at the ending and how it resolves things, but because it, it's the last couple pages it makes you kind of see, oh, there have been things that have been going on in this book that I didn't, that you don't know as a reader. Plans have been made that you were not aware of. And that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool when that happens. It, it, it made, the ending of this book made the book better than it already was. It's frankly a really, really good book. I highly recommend it. John Wyndham's The Midwitch Cuckoos. It's awesome. It's an awesome book. Really glad I read it. It was cool. So I read this. I read that book. Now the book I'm reading right now is this one. This is Swordsman in the Sky. Swordsman in the Sky, edited by Donald A. Wolheim. I'm actually going to do, maybe early in January, I'll do a video on 
Donald A. Walheim, because he was a heck of an editor. He edited a lot of science fiction books, and this is one of them, Swordsman in the Sky. This is a book about great stories of interplanetary adventure, basically the types of stories that were inspired by Edgar Rice Burroughs and Edgar Rice Burroughs' Martian series, which kind of gave gave birth to the sword and planet subgenre kind of a science fiction science fiction version of sword and sorcery kind of Edgar Rice Burroughs did not invent that genre but he certainly made it popular very popular with the Martian series of books and this is a book about that as it says on the back the millions of readers who have discovered in the works of Edgar Rice Burroughs the fascination of sword and wonder adventures on distant planets among exotic peoples have called forth an insistent demand for more. It is to meet this demand that this new anthology, Swordsman in the Sky, was created. This is an old Ace book. When was this published? This was published in 1964. has a really cool Frank Frazetta cover. And I'm really enjoying it. I haven't read too much of it yet. What am I, a th third or almost a third of the way through it? And the first story I read in this book was Swordsman of Lost Terra by Paul Anderson. And that was really good. That was a really good story. Right now I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of a story called People of the Crater by Andre Norton, which is not so good. It's... Ah. Yeah, so far, you know, maybe it'll pick up, but so far it's kind of like. But we've got some other stories by awesome people in this book. The next story is The Moon That Vanished by Leigh Brackett. Leigh Brackett is amazing. I love Leigh Brackett, so that should be good. We've got A Vision of Venus by Otis Adelbert Klein. That can go either way. Otis Adelbert Klein, who... Heavily influenced by Edgar Rice Burroughs, but not nearly as good as Edgar Rice Burroughs. So, you know, some of his stuff is good. Some of it is not so good. We'll see how, how this story is when we get to it. Then we end up with Kaldar, World of Antares by Edmund Hamilton. I tend to like even bad Edmund Hamilton stories. I like Edmund Hamilton a lot. His stories tend to be fun, good or bad. Very, very pulpy science fiction writer. Who I think it was Edmund Hamilton who read, who wrote all of the earlier Captain Planet adventures in the Captain Planet pulp magazine. He, he Edmund Hamilton's fun. Edmund Hamilton's fun. I, I usually enjoy him. So, yeah, I look forward to reading the rest of this. I'll probably finish this up tomorrow. Probably tomorrow, because I've got today and tomorrow off. I mean, I do have a lot of holiday stuff I've got to do. I've got to... The, the, the lady of the manor is working on Christmas, if you can believe that. And so I actually am tasked with fixing Christmas dinner. And the staff all seem to have disappeared for the holidays. They all seem to have... Where have they gone, Roger? I suspect foul play. Because, you know, I, I went to the staff quarters. All the staff is gone. There are just bloody footprints all over the place. I, I suspect some ancient Egyptian shenanigans have been going on. You know, Pharaoh's curses and people eating mummies and all that. But we'll see. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll turn up. But since the staff is gone... I am the one that has to cook Christmas dinner, and it could be, that's probably going to, frankly, it's going to be a disaster. It's probably going to be a disaster. So, yeah, there's that. What am I going to read after this? I don't know. I will have a, I have one more week, you know, before the year is over. And in January, of course, is going to be Ambuary, where I'm going to be reading the 10 books in the Chronicles of Amber, in the Great Book of Amber here by Roger Zelazny. So I'm going to be reading the entire Amber series in January, at least as much as I can until I get to February. So 
I'll probably be finishing it in February. But yeah, this is something I'm going to be reading in January. So I have one more week, bef you know, after I finish this, probably to read something. So it's probably going to be a little book because I don't know how much time I'll have to read this week. But I don't know what it'll be. So, you know, that'll be a surprise for next week. Also, I'm continuing with Thor. I'm reading every issue of Thor from the initial run of Thor, which ran from the early 60s until the mid-90s. I am on volume six of the Epic Collections. So this is, or this contains stories from 1972 to 1973. And at this point, Stan Lee is gone. Jack Kirby is gone. John Buscema is doing the artwork, which is really, really cool. You know, John, John Buscema is just such a cool artist and he does great on Thor. The inking, could be better in a lot of these. Uh, Vince Coletta, I think, does a lot of the inking in here. Uh, and Vince, Vince Coletta's okay. Vince Coletta's okay. But you also have inking in here by um, Jim Mooney. And I don't think... It could just be me, but I don't think Jim Mooney does Thor any favors. I... I don't think he's the best artist for John Buscema. So the inking could be better in this. Jerry Conway, I like that he is taking Thor in some different places, although Thor was just exiled. I'm in the middle of this, a little past the middle of this. Thor was just exiled to Earth again, again. He pissed Odin off again. He's always pissing Odin, Odin off. But I like that Jerry Conway, other than that, is taking the book in a couple of different directions. Jerry Conway is a writer. First of all, it's the 70s. And for some reason, the 70s were the, like the weirdest time ever. And that is reflected in the stories and the dialogue, which I... I I lived, I was alive during the 70s, but I don't remember anybody talking the way people talk in 1970s Marvel comics, you know, where they say things like, holy crud, like a lot, or what did, he, what did one, one kid said, holy spit, holy spit, who has ever said that, like ever, even in the 1970s, have you ever heard anyone say, holy spit, I mean, that's ridiculous. And a lot of the dialogue is like, is like that in 1970s comics, especially when Gary Conway writes them. And Conway doesn't seem to have... He's not as good at writing melodram melodramatic dialogue as Stan Lee was. Stan Lee just had a handle on that kind of thing. And I kind of miss Stan Lee on this book already. But we'll see. We'll see how the rest of Conway's run goes. I haven't read a lot of Conway's Thor, so we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I'll finish this up this week. I'll give you a full report next week. I did get some things in the mail. I did get some things in the mail. Uh, a viewer, a very kind viewer, sent me a couple of books. And... He sent me an email. I don't I don't know if he wants me to give his name, so I, I won't. <laughs> Although if you want to identify yourself in the comments, that's cool. But he sent me an email. He's like, Did you have you read this book? Have you read that book? And usually I'm the opposite of Steve Donahue. If you ask me if I've read a book, the answer is probably gonna be no, man. I, I've never I've never heard of that book. Um, or I've never read that book. And that was the case here. I was like, no, I, I've never read those. And one of, them, one of them was this. This is The Manuscript Found in Saragossa by Jan Pataki. And the only thing I've known about this book is that it's an old French book, right? It is French. Am I right? I think it's French. Anyway, I think it's an old French book that has stories within stories within stories. I think that's what goes on in this book, although I've never, ever read it. And actually, I know very little about it, so I'm looking forward to reading it. It's actually a really nice hardcover. It's an old hardcover, but a really nice one. So that's cool. Thank you so much.
for sending me this. And he also sent me a couple... Well, he sent me an Edgar Wallace book that has two novels in it. So this is The Green Rust. I've actually heard of this story in passing, but I've, I've certainly never read it. I've never read anything by Edgar Wallace. And now I've got this. And it also has this story, The Clue of the Twisted Candle. So I've got The Clue of the Twisted Candle and The Green Rust. So that was cool. Thank you. That was a nice thing to, you know, be sent to me on Christmas. So that was cool. Thank you for sending me this. And Grammaticus sent me a book. I, I'll go ahead and identify Grammaticus because he's like on booktube. But Grammaticus, the great channel Grammaticus, which if you like my channel, you will almost certainly like Grammaticus's channel because he's, he's like this channel only better. And he doesn't have a mummy though, which is good because then you know, the staff over at Grammaticus' house probably won't mysteriously disappear and only bloodstains will be left behind, you know? <sighs> but yeah, Grammaticus sent me a book, which was really cool. He actually did a video where he talked about a little bit about this book. And this is The Legions of Rome or Legions of Legions of Rome, A History of the Legions of Rome by Stephen Dando Collins. And he spoke very highly of this book. And I've actually, I've actually, over the years, have intended to pick this up and just never did for whatever reason. I'm very interested in ancient history. And so this is a very cool thing to have. Very much appreciate Chromaticus sending me this. Thank you, Chromaticus. It's totally awesome. You know, has a bunch of cool illustration. It's got pretty pictures in it. It's got pretty pictures in it. And lots of maps and other kinds of cool stuff. You know, all about the different legions, has all kinds of information. And, you know, it's it's awesome. Thank you very much for sending that to me. That was very cool. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. Pretty much it for this week. And I guess we'll wrap presents. We have to wrap presents ourselves since the staff has disappeared. So we're going to go wrap presents. I did get all the shopping done. I got all the Christmas shopping done. So that was good. That's good. I did it last minute, but it's done. And now I'm going to wrap presents, which I don't do particularly well. But, you know, there's no one else to do it except for me, Roger, Rhonda, and Zorro. So that's what we're going to do. I will catch you next time.